International Sunday as we have it is to uh, make us aware of the nations of the world and of our responsibility towards these nations. Amen. Amen. One of the greatest ailments and plagues which came upon the human race when we uh, fell, that is, we fell in the Garden of Eden, Adam fell. You know, that's a, a very important story for you to study. I want to encourage everyone to study that story, the story of what happened to man when he fell. The first, the first thing you will notice that happened when man fell was that he said, I was afraid and I hid myself. Self-preservation, all right? Selfishness, self-preservation, self-consciousness. Man was not conscious of himself in that way. He was naked and was not ashamed. But then he became naked and was, he was naked and now was ashamed, very conscious of himself, very conscious of preserving himself now he was hiding, all right? And so he wanted to preserve himself. Now after that, we see Cain, the son of Adam, rising up against his brother and killing him. That is another introduction of the depravity of man, to kill and one another and plunder one another, you know? Um, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that uh, when you are in a fallen state before Christ saves you, you are a creature who is very concerned about self-preservation, myself, my life, my home, my family, my mother, my father, my tribe, my country. Do you understand? I was afraid and I hid myself. Who told you that you were naked? Who has made you aware of yourself so much that you are not now just trusting me and walking with me as you used to? Who told you that you were naked? And so this world, the problems in this world can be attributed basically to this one thing that this nation is full of six billion selfish people. Six billion people who are concerned about self-preservation. Six people, billion people who are more concerned about themselves than about anything else. That's Ghana. All our leaders, who, well, not all our leaders, but many of the leaders we've had were more concerned, and in Africa, it's easy to see, we're more concerned about enriching themselves and becoming whatever than about the nation. I mean, if you are in Ghana, you will know many of the contracts and so on. You have a contract to build something costing $40 million. And then somebody who is an official on behalf of the nation will rather give that contract, which costs $40 million, to somebody else for $50 million so that that extra $10 million will go into private pockets. Do you understand? Maybe they are constructing a building, a hospital, or they are constructing a, a, an overpass, or whatever. The thing costs $9 million, then they will inflate the price to maybe $16 million, and then that $7 million is shared, or is shared amongst people. That is the common behavior of human beings. You get it? Because we don't really care. That is why some people were proposing the death sentence for corruption. Like if they find out that you've stolen the national monies, you should be executed. And you know why they say that? Because they say that because you took that $7 million, hospitals were not built, food was not bought, medicine could not be supplied. Uh, because you took that money to build that bridge, we couldn't build this road and this road. We had so many people dying on that dangerous road. You people, you don't know how dangerous the roads in Ghana are. It's only a visitor who knows about traveling who will tell you how dangerous Ghanaian roads are. We pass by each other by three inches. 
at top speed. <laughs> Sometimes when you pass, the car vibrates. How many have been in a car? You see that the car is shaking. Very dangerous. And the money for the road is with somebody. And that is why some people propose the death sentence because they are saying that by stealing that money, you have actually killed people. So you are a murderer and therefore you must be executed. That's the, that's the, that's the rationale. That's the logic. Anyway, so our selfishness, you know, is what we take into marriage. And that's what are the difficulties we have in marriage because as we come into marriage, the man is thinking of certain things, what he wants. And the woman is also thinking of what she wants and what she expects. And they are completely different. That's the cause of all the conflicts. As you've come to the church today, you also have what you are after. <laughs> and I also have what I'm after. When I declare myself to be a pastor, you get it, I know what I'm after. And I, I know what you may think that I'm after. It's a wonderful world. But it's full of self-preserving people. People can't preach well because they are self they have so much self-preservation. You can't even tell the real story. People cannot tell the story of their own difficulty. They cannot express how they have suffered or any weaknesses they've had because you want to keep yourself and look good. That's why people can't work for God, can't preach well. You don't preach well when you can't tell about your life because all of us are weak. Even the pastors are weak. We serve God, but we are weak. I have heard pastors weeping like children because we are human beings also. And we also have problems and difficulties just like everybody else. But self-preservation would not like you to expose yourself to someone. So we sit down quietly in our pews and our lives. We don't want to be noticed at all. Nobody should mention our name. Nobody should bring us into the limelight. So we are self-preserving, selfish people. The whole world, America went to invade Iraq. Why do you think they went to invade Iraq? It's easy to say they are looking, for, they are looking to help the Iraqi people and the these people and all those people. But there have been many more conflicts in Africa and all, uh, all over the world. Equally far as from America as Iraq is from America. It's not that the, the conflict is just near, uh, Iraq is near America and uh, Africa is far. They are all far. It, the, the selfishness of human, most of the wars that are fought in the world are fought by out of selfishness. We think about ourselves. We think about our lives. We think about ourselves, how we can do well. But at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, when Jesus comes into your lives and saves you, one of the things that must be killed and crucified is selfishness. He said, if anyone will come after me, let him take up his cross and let him deny himself. Himself. Yourself must be denied. You must say no to yourself, your plans, your will, your intentions. Yourself is the one you have to deny. Deny means prevent. Deny means say no to. Deny means put yourself aside and put something else there. This is the reason why most churches are full of people who are grasping at things in this world and in this life rather than holding on to the cross. When you take up your cross and you are following Christ, you are not grasping anything. You are giving up everything. And that's why many of us are not useful to God. We are useful to sit in a church, to attend a church, but we, we will not be involved in the labor that we have or that we are supposed to be involved with. How often will you hear these messages without giving up of yourself? It is sometimes when we have to give money to the Lord. It's as though you are extracting a tooth from somebody or when somebody has to give some little money as though you are doing blood transfusion from the person. But when you are taking money to spend on yourself, Look at the volumes that you spend on yourself. Look at how much you spend on yourself, on your own activities. 
and what you want to do for yourself. Always weigh the two. And you will find out that you are really selfish. I am selfish. You are selfish. We are all suffering from selfishness. You go and ask somebody for five thousand dollars to build a church, huh? The person will say, "Oh, <laughs> I the way things are. Let me let me see you later, and I'll give you maybe I'll give you a thousand dollars, or I'll give you five hundred dollars, or let me give you five hundred thousand for now, and we'll see what the Lord will do with time." But the same person will spend fifty thousand dollars to maybe change the color of something in his house. When it comes to yourself, you release yourself. You let yourself go and you do whatever you have to do. Come to church to spend time eh? in the presence of the Lord. Oh, we don't have time. But when it comes to some reason why you will have to spend time, maybe you have to do something to line up at the embassy to get a visa at a dangerous place like American Embassy. One of the dangerous places in Ghana is the American Embassy. Why do I say that? Because um, we all know that American installations are targets. You, don't you know that American installations are targets? They are, they are international targets of terrorism. They bombed the Nairobi. I was in the Nairobi Embassy where I saw the names of the people. I went into the little, they have made a little park in Nairobi for all the people who were killed. You should see the names of the people, families. Destroyed and killed Kenyans. Destroyed and killed in one day. Probably they were coming for visas, coming for green cards, coming for papers. But Ghanaians would not mind going to queue at such a dangerous place. You can sleep there, do whatever there, work there, do everything there, because it's for something that you can see benefits you for yourself. Oh, that's how we are. That's how the whole world, that's why we have such conflict. That's why, that's why Nigeria will, will fight with Cameroon over oil, an oil-rich area. You get it? And, and that is why nations go to war against each other until we can see there's something you have that I want. And so on, and, and India with Pakistan and all the other places that there's war. Gold. Yesterday I was, I was watching a documentary about South Africa. How there was a group called the Boers, and they occupied a, a, a part of South Africa, Johannesburg area. And then they discovered gold. Then the British came to fight with them in somebody's country. And the British fought and fought. Then they sent, the Queen sent 6,000 more British troops. And after that, they fought and they were not winning. Then they sent 45, they said by saying that there were 45,000 troops. This is 1900. 45,000 troops to come to fight. And the area they were fighting was Johannesburg. If you go to Johannesburg today, you'll see mountains of uh, sand heaped from what they brought from under the ground. Gold is a gold rich area. And they fought and they fought and they fought. And at a the point then, they got to the real Johannesburg place and the leader of the Boers, whatever group that is, said, if you allow us to go, we'll fight with you. So they allowed them to go. When they went out, then they, from outside, they started to fight guerrilla tactics. They fought and they fought and they fought till they realized that they were not, the British realized they were not fighting them. Then they started to now attack the villages and round up children and women into concentration camps. That's the first time the term concentration camp was used. British people. And they killed, they said more children, more of those people were killed than in the whole war. Until finally after two years, they gave up. For what? For gold. This is how we are and it's how you are and how I am. When people are getting married, they will look at you and say, you've got a British passport, I will marry you, so I'll also get a stay. Is it not true? What I'm saying, is it not true? When somebody comes to propose and the person is rich, don't you say yes immediately? When a poor man comes to propose to you, you look at yourself and you ask, what will I get from this man? And what I, I will suffer when I follow this man? Don't tell me that you just said yes because of the love of God or because of the glory of God. You are thinking about yourself. You are thinking about when you go into public with this person, what will people say? And what car will he drive? Where does he live? 
If a new person comes from America and says, I'm going back to the States and he proposes to you, I mean, you, you will say, uh, you, you want to pray about it, oh, Malay, you will say yes immediately. Because we are so selfish. And the reason I've come to you on this morning, on this International Sunday morning, to share with you about this, is to say that at the end of the day, when all the nations come together, they will say one thing, salvation to our God. Salvation comes from God. I tell you, I have seen doctors will at the end of their life say, salvation belongs to God. It is God who really saves us. It's not our nation which saves us. Our nation cannot save us. Our marriages cannot save us. Our families cannot save us. Nothing can save us. Salvation comes from God. People need the Lord. People need God. People need Christ. People need to be saved. The blood of Jesus needs to be made available for people to be washed in the blood of Jesus. People need God. And that is what this church is committed to. And that is what we have to help. You have to help the church to accomplish what it has to accomplish. I remember speaking to one politician who claimed to be a Christian or is a Christian. And I said to him, listen, you are now in power. Help the church because you are a believer. But you see, when you have to help the church and it goes against your selfish ambitions, in any way it may jeopardize how you look politically. You know, when you associate with this Christian thing or that Christian thing, then they back out. But the Muslims don't back out like that. The Muslims will put on their headgear and say, we are Muslims. We call ourselves Alaji in the parliament, in the government. So I said to him, help the church. And he didn't help us. And they want to be associated with the church. When it's election time, they want to come and sit in the front of our churches. And why do you think they come to the churches in election year? Why do you think politicians come and sit here in election year? So that all of us say, oh, but these are all Christians. And then when they are praying, when we are praying, everybody looks at them to see whether they are praying. Is it, is it not true? And then when they are singing, everybody looks to see if they are singing. Then you see somebody taking out a handkerchief and then they dance and say, oh, she's a believer. She's born again. So it's, ah, let's vote for this person. He's a born again Christian. Why do you think they came to church? Because they love God? Because they love the church? Because they love the pastor? No, they love their election votes and they want to be voted for. They have their own selfish reason. That's why they come. Listen. Listen to me. I want to tell you something. Let us decide to come out of the selfishness of the church. The church is a, another selfish group. Even though Christ has saved us, we are so selfish that we don't take the gospel to the places we have to take it to. If you transfer somebody or say, go and stay in this town and be there till Jesus comes, the person will look at you and say, ah, for me, what about my child? What about this? What about that? The selfishness does not allow us to obey God. But one day, we will regret having lived the life of selfishness. And I want, to, I want to encourage you, turn away from selfishness. Turn away from looking to yourself, what you can get, how you can benefit. You know, yesterday I, I was walking somewhere and I saw a little bench. I mean, a small bench like this for people to sit when they are walking by. And they are written, donated by Mrs. So and so and so and so. And I was saying to myself that even the donations that are made and the gifts that are made by human beings, somebody has to know about it. If people don't know what you have done, you won't do it. A little, little small about like this. Small chair. You have to paint on it, donated by Madame So and so. We have to give in such a way that everybody sees us. It's all part of the selfishness. But today God is telling us, let's come out of selfishness. Let's go into the world and win the lost. Let us be a church which is interested in the missions to the whole world and to Ghana. You know, once I made a pledge to the Lord that I want to build 1,000 churches in Ghana. And we are on the way in Ghana alone. We are building and we are in the nations at great cost. At great cost. 
In, uh, I'm going to, I just want to read to you. When you say Lighthouse Chapel International, so that you, you may know. Port of Spain. Port of Spain. That's next to South America. In, uh, we have Pastor Robert Dodu. Dodu is a girl name. Do you know Dodu? He's a girl from Ghana, from Collegono. He's there in Trinidad. In Jamaica. At, at the risk of his life. In Jamaica, we have David Jedu. David Jedu is a student at Legon. He's now in Jamaica. You see, and he's there at the peril of his own life. You see, one day they started to question that, where is your wife? Because his wife has not yet come. And in Jamaica, they hate homosexuals. And they'll kill, if they realize that you are homosexual, they'll kill you. So he called Pastor Richard and was telling him that, you know, that he was even now in danger because the people thought that he was a gay. I tell you, at the peril of his own life. Yeah, they thought he was gay. So he had to stand in the church and explain to them, my wife is here, his wife is about to have a baby. Because they look at you, want to say, hey, <laughs> you are a man eater. We are going to kill you now. <laughs> All these people are doing this work at the peril of their own lives. Lagos, Pastor Jacob, Pastor Emmanuel uh, Yeboa, Kezia in Lagos, South Af- in South Africa, Hamish Odo in Cape Town, in Namibia, we have Kingsley Jesse, in Nairobi, Kenya, we have Isaac Komi, Kampala, Uganda, Christian, Christian Ado, in Zambia, Pastor Sawyer, Sam Sawyer. In Lagos, also Kezia. Um, in Manzini, Swaziland, and the Juma. We are supporting all these as the church, Lighthouse. Elaine Clufio in Pretoria, Apache. Pastor Joe Amable in Tanzania. Joe Amable, you know Joe Amable? It's an Elwe name, it's an Elwe. He is in Tanzania. Yesterday he sent me a text in Swahili. I couldn't understand any of the words. Then in Botswana, we have Fred. He's now here with us. In Johannesburg, we have Wisdom Chi. Chi. Chi, is that how you pronounce it? Chi. Annie Francisca Odoi in South Africa, Cape Town. In Bindura, Zimbabwe, Ni Ajedu, Amar. Ibadan, Nigeria, Kofi Opata. Cameroon, Yaounde, Kevin. Apatem, and also in uh, Cameroon, we have Mamiesi Dapatem, who is my little cousin. And also in Yaounde, Cameroon, we have Samuel Obeng Ajepong. All right, in Cape Town again, we have Larry Odonko. Are these Ghanaian names? Yeah. These are our church members who used to sit here. The first person who used to who shouted mercy is Larry, he used to sit here. I preached one day, he shouted, Mercy! Atonement! And he's the one who used to sit here. He's in Cape Town. Where are you? Are you there? Mm-hmm. Where are we? Harari! Harari, Zimbabwe. Landi Amofasechi and Modupe. These are all brothers and sisters from here. Bram Fontaine in South Africa. Miranda, um, Mami Lodi in South Africa, we have Penny Crescent, that's not a Ghanaian. And in Cape Town, we have Angela Odonko, Port Elizabeth, Port Elizabeth in South Africa, Delali, Harley, is it a Ghanaian name? Delali, Harley, Dela Harley, <laughs> and Port Elizabeth. Daniel Harley, uh, Lusaka, Zambia, Lusaka, Pastor Silas. Do you know Pastor Silas? Okay. All right. In Kingdom, Sierra Leone, we have James Forokanu. James. In Nairobi, again, we have Daniel Atabedu. And uh, Addis Ababa, we have in Ethiopia Susan Komba and Pastor Tamba Komba, who are Sierra Leoneans, but they, they are in uh, what do you call it? Ethiopia. Ask of me and I will give you the nations. 
Hallelujah. In Bangui, in Central African Republic, we have Anise. And um, Rustenberg, we have Pastor Dr. Mills and his wife, Caroline, in Rustenberg, in South Africa. It's a place in South Africa. And a few more places. I don't want to bother to mention them. All these places we are being, uh, we are reaching out. And it's important, you see, you ask yourself, like, why should you send people to these places? And most of these places are, when you go outside Ghana, you see that Ghana is rich. After South Africa, the next country is Ghana. Yeah, before Nigeria and other countries come. It's true. Now, in terms of destinations in the world today, in Africa, South Africa and Ghana, these are the main the rest of the places, dangerous and whatever. But we are there. And also in our towns, in Ghana, we are even starting a new denomination. You'll be hearing about it soon with a new name. And we are going into the tree speaking and the airway speaking. We are, we are starting a new denomination of lighthouse church. It's called Evangelical Lighthouse Church. That's in the Volta region and the Togo areas Amen. evangelical Amen. i think the airways they like evangelical yes. a good man. Yes. Uh -huh. and so on and so forth and we are going to the towns towns so god wants us to do our best please come out of yourself come out of hiding i was afraid and i hid myself come out of your reservation Come out of your keeping of yourself and let us work together because one day the bell will sound. King, 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 king. Time up. It's over. King, king, king. You won't be able to win one more soul. Reverend Saki, please come. I need you for a minute. You know, I want you to tell us the story of uh, Pastor Rick Warren's uh, father. You know, there's a book called uh, The Purpose Driven Church, a very big church by a pastor in America. And he, he, he I don't know if he wrote it in his book, but tell us. It's in the book, uh, one of the books. His father was dying, and then he was sitting by here, and his wife was sitting by the father, his best side house was dying. And the father had been a preacher for many years. Now, just at a point when it was like, he was really going, going on. You know, sometimes when people are about to die, they become strong for a few minutes. Is that not so? He, he just got up, like, that to get up from the bed. Let's see if my line of any um, months. That to get up from the bed, he got to shake. And he said, I'm going to win so. I'm going to win one more so. I'm going to win one more so. So people around here, and they helped help him to get up from the bed. And he took a deep breath, breath and then told the son and said, Please, what are you to do it? Win one more so before you die. Win one more so before you die. Win one more soul. He got up from the bed. I want to win one more soul. I want to win one more soul. Hey. You see, when eternity knocks at your door, look, everything you have will be gone. Yesterday I got the news that one of our church members was dead. Somebody who had been with that for many, many years. And I began to think, you know, the only thing that is useful now, she has left behind her husband, her children, everything, just gone. The only thing that will be of value now eh, is what will be gone. And if you are dead and your husband is alive, you have a couple of little children. It means that the house you built that you were painting, maybe you were painting for another girl. Oh, yeah, yeah. So maybe when you were arranging and you were buying curtains and you were doing things, you were buying it for another girl, Tulin Jali, to come and stay there. Uh, but what is of value to you now? And in that day, the only thing is God. And when she was dying, she said to the pastor, pray for me now, just as she was dying. Pray for me now, now. Don't waste time now. Pray for me right now. No, don't waste time. Quickly, pray for me now. As soon as he prayed for her, she died. He died right there in front of her. Listen to me, church. One of these days, and eh, all that I'm talking about, I'm your pastor, I'm your preacher. Do you understand? God gave you to me and me to you. 
to encourage you and I'm telling you, come out. He said, I was afraid and I hid myself. How many of us are hiding ourselves from God? Hiding ourselves from God. Hiding from who? From God. From his will. From his work. We have retreated. Let us come out. We are hiding our money from him. Even our tithes, we are hiding it from him. We are hiding our best days. We are waiting till we retire. It's time to come out. It's time to serve him. Salvation belongs to God. Only God can save the people of this world. At first, when I was invited to preach, I, I would ask myself, what am I going to preach about when I go? When I was going to Malaysia, what am I going to preach? Malaysia, they all look like Chinese and Indians. What am I going to preach when I go to America? What am I going to preach when I go to uh, uh, South America, the Spanish speak? You know, I found the same thing. They are all human beings. They all have the same problem. I preach exactly as I preach here. If you see me there, you see, and even better, I preach exactly the same. I was in Los Angeles preaching to film stars. You know what I preach about? I preach about bearing fruit. I said, you must work for God. You should have seen the stars coming to the front. Magic Johnson's wife and others, they were all come, they were all lined up there. Stars. One film star came upstairs to see me, said, I want to work for God. I want to work for God. Listen, salvation belongs to God. Salvation does not belong to money. Nothing that you have will bring salvation. That is why I work for him. Full time, all the time. Don't make a mistake about it. If you've ever seen somebody who is preaching because of money, you are not looking at such a person now. I don't preach for money. I don't work for money. I'm working for him till I die. My last breath should be for him. And perhaps if I'm going, that's what I would like to tell you. Rise up. Win one more soul. Do something. Come out of your selfishness. That's why we go to the nations. We don't need any of these nations to make us anything. After all, all these things are mentioned to you. You don't even know about them. We're doing them. You don't know. We don't, we don't announce to you. We are just doing what we have to do. We are not doing it to make ourselves famous or to make you, make you like us or make you think we are great. We are doing it because it's important. In that corner somewhere, somebody loves God. And to that person, it makes a difference. Somebody who knows God. Ladies and gentlemen, I was afraid, so I hid myself. Are we going to hide ourselves from the nations? Sometimes I want to send people, I can't send them because I don't have money to send them. If I thought that sometimes, I have always people, I have things I want to do, I can't do because I don't have money. And we hide our money. We hide our lives. We hide ourselves. Let's not hide. Let selfishness die in you. Give your life to God. I said give your life to God. Let's go out of selfishness so that we can really say, when we see selfishness on television, we will not look and be looking at something that is just a mirror image of how you really are, but in another way. And we will see that Christ has made a difference in our lives. All right, our time is up. You can